Hi guys, welcome to the channel and I hope you enjoyed today's review. This is about a San Martin, the SN031G, and it's paying homage to quite a few unusual watches. I mean, when I say homage, I mean it really is blending a few different attributes, but some more strongly than others, which we'll go to in some more detail in this review. But is this watch any good for £120? Is this watch too ugly to wear? Is this watch ghastly? Or is this something that is going to grow on you? And, um, well... Let's uh, continue this review and we'll find out. See you in a moment. So let's get involved with me just showing you the stats and specs. This is a new format I'm going to experiment with. It's a bit more punchy, a bit more snappy and gives you everything you need to know. And then we're going to more detail after that. So see what you think. So now you've got the stats and specs, let's get down to the real nitty gritty of analyzing this piece. You're gonna to get to see lots of lovely macros and close-ups and loom shots and everything you need to uh, really decide if this is for you and maybe some things you should be wary of and consider as possible turnoffs if you're in the market for one of these watches or if you're not in the market for it, why maybe you should be. So let's get on with that. So the San Martin SN031G, you've seen the stats and specs, but the movement is running okay. Beat error is a bit off, just about on the cusp of being slightly concerned. It's running all right. And I've tested it in four or five different positions. It's averaged about what you see on the screen, really. So it's good, happy days on that. And then the loom. Again, let's do some nice macros and things coming up here because I just want to discuss, it's got C3 loom, but because these are not applied indices, what you effectively have is it's difficult to get that depth of application compared to if you've got something you can really fill up with that loom. So the C3 loom lasts pretty well on here, but not quite as good as the other San Martins. But bear in mind, this is only £120, this watch. Think of any other £120 watch you've ever bought and how it could possibly compare. This would generally wipe the floor with it. Now we're going to move on to what I'm going to discuss with you is a delicate area at the moment, it seems, with the whole discussing of homages. Homage is, you know, the, the definition is a, is a faithful and respectful tribute to something or someone. I know it's a grey area. And honestly, you're going to see a picture pop up of how, how closely this is homaging through respectful design. Uh, God, how do I word this? Design tribute. <laughs> oh my God. A Unimatic H2, no, U, not H2. U2, that's the U2H, because they did a special edition, which was the Hodinkee edition. And it obviously looks very similar to this. It had a great dial and it had text on the dial and it had a different strap and and the Hodinkee version had text on the back. But this is this is very, very, very similar in terms of the case design. But San Martin, it's very clever what they've done their own spin on it. And I like the fact they've used this California style dial. And I'll give you a little bit of info about Cali dials. Um, it's a nickname effectively because Rolex owned the patent or the, from a very long time ago in the early 1940s to this design. And it was actually originally called the, quote, high visibility dial. And they did it for a reason. They did on purpose have a separation between the top half and the bottom half of the dial. So we've got Roman numerals and Arabics on here. And then at the 12, 3, 6 and 9, we've got either the upside down triangle or a big, thick, chunky dash at the 3, 6 and 9. Very clever. And although some people say it's hideous, it looks ridiculous, it looks wrong, it was actually designed for a purpose. And that is the whole, like I said, quote, high visibility thing. And that is because for some reason, it, your brain tunes into it. Uh, it does make this watch very easy to read the time at a glance and quickly. And as this is meant to be a chunky, robust field style watch, I think that is actually a clever way of having that kind of, uh, sort of legibility without having to maybe go down the usual route of how you would make a dial legible. It's, it's interesting, and that's why I, like, I personally like it. It's different, and it works as a functional thing. Aesthetically, it's weird. I get that. But also, I like the fact it is neutral. It doesn't have any extra text or 
literature on there because you don't need it. It's, it would detract from the purpose of this watch, which is to be a very utilitarian piece. That is why it's fun. It's, it's a big chunky beastie, but being only a 38 case, and even though it looks like it's a very long watch, it's it wears really well, even though I thought it wouldn't because there's zero taper. If anything, these lugs curve upwards slightly. You think it would wear awkwardly, but I've worn this all week at work and it is so comfortable and a joy to wear. And I really mean that. So they're going back to this whole Cali dial thing. The interesting thing is, is that it's a bit of a myth behind this whole California thing. We know California as a nickname for this is because it was very popular in California. But for what reason? There's a number of myths that I've read from things like Rolex Magazine and other people that have really gone into this. And even I think it's Time and Tide and Hodinkee and other places where they've done research on this. No one's come to a definitive conclusion because there isn't one. The most likely is that there was a watch builder, watchmaker, watch restorer in the 70s called Carl Rich. And he used this dial a lot when it comes to putting dials in to um, restored Rolexes. But while I'm on the subject, an interesting thing is where I think this is paying a clever and respectful homage and maybe Unimatic are homaging it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but check out this uh, case back I found. It's, this is what I'm showing you pictures of here. Um, it's just for reference and education purposes. It's not to promote this product. It's reference to what I think is there's a lineage of inspiration somewhere along the line of the last century. If you see here popping up on the left, this case shape from Rolex is called the bubble back. And they originally in the, in the Art Deco era used this dial design, which ended up in the seventies and onwards being called the Cali dial and throughout time being used by Panerai and things like that. But the interesting thing about that is a very clever way. I think that's maybe why Unimatic used it as well. There's no actually clear information on why Unimatic used this dial type on their Hodinkee Special Edition. I, someone out there educate me. I may be presuming correctly because I really found from my research to do this review that clever connection in this very lovely and unusual quirky case shape how it could have been inspired by those very early art deco era rolexes and and then blended in this dial design so it's a weird mix of contemporary chunky field style military watch kind of utilitarian blended in with art deco very clever and that's why i think it's a unique and interesting piece it works so well this is all the reasons everything i've just said are all the reasons why i like it i don't need to re go over all that again you've got the idea of what i like about this watch it is a positive start things i need to discuss i think you need to be wary of i know a lot of people from my research I'd like to skip the bit they need to be wary of um the main thing that you should be wary of with this piece is the strap it comes with although it has a glorious buckle it's very 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 well made it's like it's a work of art just the buckle itself it's so beautifully machined first criticism is that bit of text there san martin uh not working at all with the new sort of crown s they put on there totally different font it looks like a dollar sign of sorts or it's made of Lego or something. Back to the strap, why this is one of the main things. Look how thin it is, very thin. And then look how it's like lost in these really chunky, very straight angular lugs. So I'm gonna put this on wrist and show you why that is the main issue. And here it is on wrist. As the immediate thing I wanna point out is just look how immediately this somehow feels on these very straight lugs. Look that they're floating, it makes the watch look like it's levitating off the wrist, as you can see there it does not remotely affect the comfort. It just makes it look slightly odd. So let's get this on another strap and I'm gonna show you why strap choice on this watch. I'm gonna be promoting my own straps here and this is an excellent opportunity to show you how straps can transform great watch into one that is really desirable. So let's have a closer look. Now this is the Tempest and the reason why I've put it on this is because first of all, I like the rubber, but there's a clever design element to this watch. This uh, strap, it's, it's very chunky at the where the lugs uh, are. And you can see it's the right thickness to match the thickness of the lugs, positive already. And it's already got built into it a natural curve. So I'm going to get this on wrist and show you why I think this transforms it. And this is what I've been wearing on all week. Already, as you can see, it just seems to help blend in with the watch more. It brings that the appearance of those long lugs, the long lug to lug of nearly 50, out a bit more with the chunkiness and that natural curve built into the strap already. So that's why this strap works really well. I've got another little treat for you. I'm gonna to have to put it on another strap, show you why a good chunky strap goes with this good chunky watch, what I call the Black Mamba. And I've got a little trick as well to show you. And the trick is, this is the Black Mamba. It's a 20 mil lug width watch. I really love, I mean, I adore this buckle. I'm just gonna show you again. Look at it, the machining of it, absolutely 
gorgeous. I'm like, well, I'd like to keep that on the watch as it's branded and it's so beautifully made. Let's keep that. I can put it on my upgraded extra long Black Mamba NATO style strap and let's put it on that. And here we are on the Black Mamba, the original buckle on the Black Mamba. I call it Black Mamba because it's black and it's extra long, like a Black Mamba snake. How creative. But because it's a military style utilitarian watch, works so well with this. The added extra sort of a little bit of bulk you get here and here with the hardware, which is all brushed to match the watch. It really cleverly sort of brings the watch around and together. And look, it doesn't pull the case away that much at all away from your wrist. So it's, it's almost like it's meant to go with this kind of strap. It, it works better. And I've gone for the extra long because of the way this lug design works. It seems to, uh, it affects how the material wraps around. So the, the normal length NATOs are okay and they just about get to there. But this one, being the extra long one, helps um, with, the, with the fold back tuck in ni nicely there. So I think this is a great match. What do you guys think? Now, before I finish, I really just want to quickly discuss the real top things what I love about this watch again, and that's this dome sapphire with the AR coating. The way it just plays with that and distorts it massively is stunning. The all brushed finish really actually plays with light amazingly. There's no glare or gloss, but the way it sort of bends and makes a prism effect and sunburst effect with the light, that is gorgeous. Very interesting to look at the way it plays with the light. And then you've got a lovely big crown, not too big, in proportion with the case side. It's a lovely screw down crown, 200 meters on this. Faux patina on there, again, brings a little bit of a vintage interest to it. And the tiny bit of color you get with that second hand. All these subtle details, including those brushed hands. So clever. Devil's in the detail with this watch, and that's why it's grown on me. So in conclusion, yes, I have really fallen for this watch. I bought it with my own money. I bought it from a place where the link that you'll get earns me no commission. Totally unbiased. I like slightly quirky watches. That's me personally. And if you want something that's got a kind of field aesthetic without it being your traditional field style watch like you get with your old uh, Hamiltons and things like that and Timex and God knows what else, this is something so different. And to have that dial, which is like really unusual and it's a bit Marmite. I know and for anyone who doesn't know what Marmite means, it's basically it's love or hate. Um, I love it. I think it is as clear as any other dial I've ever seen it is weird. I think they were very clever with how they are playing with your mind with this whole high visibility dial, which is how this sort of design concept originated, which I, I think um, is, is so clever. So why not have something a bit more eccentric and quirky on your wrist? Can't go wrong with one of these. So would I recommend it? Yeah, definitely. But if not, thanks for watching anyway and sticking to the end of the video. See you in the next one. Bye for now.